the second video on cervical cancer. I'm going to talk about diagnostic evaluation of cervical cancer, about staging, treatment, and prevention. Let's start with the diagnostic evaluation with the history. Okay, so history in the previous video, I talked to you, to you about the risk factors, the differential diagnosis, and those things to ask about in history. Okay, let's move to the important physical examination. The important thing about physical examination here is PV examination. PV examination, you can see a cervical mass that bleed, okay? That's bleeding, okay? This cervical mass may be ulcerative or exophytic, okay? So you can see a cervical mass in macroscopic tumors, but in microscopic tumors, you can't see the cervical mass you only can know by taking a biopsy that there is a mass okay this cervical mass that you may see will bleed on palpation easily okay so it will have a bleeding tendency the bleeding or the discharge will be perlant cirrus and a bloody and or bloody discharge okay Perlant, cirrus, and or bloody discharge. By manual examination, we can feel a mass in cervix in some cases, not all of cases, of course. Okay, that mass in cervix may invade the upper vagina, the caldi sac, the adenixa. Adenixa means the tissue around the uterus. Okay, so in baby examination by inspection you can see a cervical mass sometimes okay it may be insulative or exophytic you can by palpation notice that it will bleed easily okay bleeding will be pellent cirrus bloody discharge by by manual examination you can feel a cervical mass sometimes maybe adenixal masses upper vagina or cul de sac masses Digital rectal examination or PR examination, per rectal examination, is very important to know whether we have a rectal invasion or not. Okay. After physical examination, we move to Pap smear. Pap smear. Pap smear is done to screen cervical cancer. It is not diagnostic for cervical cancer. Never say that Pap smear is to diagnose cervical cancer just to uh, screen cervical cancer and after pap smear in some cases we do colposcopy okay and i'm going to talk about pap smear and colposcopy into details in other separate video okay so if we have an abnormal pap smear or visible visible mass so we we've done physical examination inspection and we so a visible mass or there is an abnormal pap smear then we have to move to cervical biopsy but not just cervical biopsy also endometrial biopsy because the source of the cervical mass that we uh, we saw for example maybe endometrial okay maybe descended from the cervix we cannot know so we have to do cervical and endometrial biopsy and this is the only diagnostic test to be done in this case okay. so pap smear and colposcopy is not to be uh, is not diagnostic so history physical examination the pap smear and colposcopy after that if we have abnormal pap smear visible mass we move to cervical and endometrial biopsy after that we move to cystoscopy sigmoidoscopy chest and skeletal radiography why because uh, these uh, tests are uh, are to be done to know if we have any meds any invasion okay of the rectum of the bladder if the bladder for example we do cystoscopy of the rectum we do uh, sigmoidoscopy to the lung distant metastasis we do chest and skeletal radiography intravenous Pyrography also is done and liver function test because it's susceptible site to uh, meds. 
okay also we can do ultrasound CT scan MRI to know the extent of disease okay to know the extent of disease but never never ever to stage the cervical cancer ultrasound CT scan MRI is not used to stage the invasive cervical cancer at all but just also well, <laughs> sorry but uh, it is just used to know the extent of the disease okay so we now move to staging of cervical cancer how to stage cervical cancer staging of cervical cancer is only clinical staging why because it is common disease in developing countries as I said in the first video okay and the, these uh, those the developing countries have no resources or tools to stage the cervical cancer surgically or okay or etc in other uh, way so the clinical staging is the only clinical uh, only staging method in cervical cancer what do we mean by clinical staging by uh, that, this is the type of staging we done by physical we do by physical examination and or non-invasive tests okay so clinical staging let's just erase that because it's not untidy okay so a, cl a clinical staging is done by physical examination non-invasive tests non-invasive tests like what like biography intravenous biography some radiography like CT scan MRI and so on physical examination as we said PV examination, PR examination or DHE, DRE examination to know the cervix size, the parametrium invasion for example to know if the, we have uh, rectum invasion okay don't forget that CT scan MRI and ultrasound are not to uh, stage the disease but to know the extent of the disease may help us to know the extent of the disease staging in the case of macroscopic finding okay clinical staging in the case of macroscopic but what if we have a microscopic cervical cancer the staging in this case is by histopathology okay so now let's move to staging of cervical cancer what are the stages of the cervical cancer we have stage 0 1 2 3 4 in stage 0 we have a carcinoma in, se in situ okay in uh, intact basement membrane okay so the cervical cancer invasive cer cervical cancer is that cancer that invades the basement membrane in the case of carcinoma in situ or stage 0 we have intact basement membrane okay in stage 1 we have a cancer that is confined to the cervix just in the cervix and this is the most stage uh, to diagnose patient in okay so it is confined to cervix no invasion to any other side in stage 2 we have a tumor that invades beyond the cervix okay but not to pelvic sides not to pelvic wall sides or to lower vaginal third to lower vaginal third so stage 0 carcinoma site to stage 1 confined to the cervix stage 2 to beyond the cervix but doesn't invade the pelvic uh, wall or the uh, lower third of the vagina stage 3 invades the pelvic wall and lower third of the vagina stage 4 is uh, the, a tumor that extends beyond the pelvis either locally or distantly locally like to bladder to the rectum and distant invasion like to lung to bone to liver and so on okay so remind zero one two three four zero carcinoma in situ one confined to the cervix two beyond the cervix but not to the side walls of the pelvis or to the lower third of the vagina three invades the pelvic wall or the lower third of the vagina for beyond the pelvis metastasis like to the rectum to the bladder 
or to the distance in places. Okay, so the spread of cervical cancer is by local invasion, first thing, by direct invasion to the stroma of the cervix, to the vagina, to the barometrium, and so on. Okay, then after the local invasion, we have a lymphatic invasion to pelvic lymph nodes and paraaortic lymph node. And the paraaortic lymph node is the most reliable for prognosis. Okay, so the most important the prognostic factor for cervical cancer is paraaortic lymph node invasion. Okay, and you can see paraaortic lymph node invasion in 20% of stage 2 cervical cancer and in 30% in th stage 3 cervical cancer. What is stage 3 cervical cancer? Is, is, uh, it invades the pelvic wall and the upper, uh, lower third of the vagina, okay? So, lymph node invasion, paraaortic lymph node invasion, 20% in stage 2 and 30% uh, in stage 3. After lymph node invasion, we have hematogenous invasion to the liver, to the lung, to the bone, okay? I want to stress that uh, lymph node invasion has nothing to do with staging of cervical cancer, okay? So staging of cervical cancer is clinically and ha has nothing to do with lymph node invasion. Let let's back to the staging of uh, cervical cancer. The treatment of cervical cancer will be according to the stage of the cervical cancer. So if it is a stage one, confined to the cervix, just micro-invasive, okay? These stages are also subdivided into other uh, uh, divisions, okay? But I won't uh, mention that here, okay? But for example, in stage 1 that confined to the cervix, we have stage 1, 3, uh, stage 1, uh, A, B, C, okay? below than 3 centimeters, more than 3 centimeters, but less than 5 centimeters, and uh, more than 5 centimeters. So, we have multiple subdivisions of the these sta those stages, okay? So, in stage 1, especially in stage 1, uh, below than 3 centimeters, we do simple hysterectomy. In stage 2, A, or in stage 1, the last more than five centimeters stage one or in stage two just a okay stage two a means the first degree of stage two okay we do modified radical hysterectomy so stage one simple hysterectomy stage two a modified radical hysterectomy the rest of cancers mostly will be treated with chemo and radiotherapy Radiotherapy is the main treatment here. Chemotherapy is with low dose, 40 milligram, as an adjuvant therapy. Okay, what is the most common factor to use is cisplatin. cisplatin. Also, with chemo and radiotherapy, we do lymph node dissection, and also with modified radical hysterectomy, we do lymph node dissection with simple hysterectomy. Okay, so this is the treatment of cervical cancer. Now, what are the lab tests to do in cervical cancer? We can do a test for anemia because we have a bleeding, uremia, high creatinine in the cases of renal failure. So remember, we said that the uh, renal failure is the most common cause of death in cervical cancer. How to prevent cervical cancer? You can prevent cervical cancer by preventing the risk factors. Simply, okay, the first thing to prevent is factors. How? Well, by uh, decree, uh, sexual partners and the hygiene, social economic class, and uh, etc. Okay, the most important thing to prevent the cervical cancer and that has added the value to prevention of cervical cancer to very high measures is pap smear. Pap smear will be our subject. In one of the subsequent videos, okay, I will talk into details of pap smear and colposcopy, okay, but I want you to know that it's a screening cytological test to screen for cervical cancer. It is not diagnostic, just screening test, okay. Nowadays, we have vaccination for cervical cancer, 
uh, in the age between 9 and six, 26 and after that they developed uh, a vaccine uh, up to 14 okay so uh, vaccination is also a method of uh, vaccination also, uh, for uh, of course for uh, human peloma virus okay a method of a prevention of cervical cancer so this is all about cervical cancer I talked about in this video about the approach to cervical cancer talked about the history in the previous video physical examination PVDRE okay about pap smear and colposcopy then the biopsy staging the clinical staging physical examination non-invasive tests like radiograph etc I talked about the stages of cervical cancer 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and the treatment according to staging the spread of cervical cancer local invasion and lymph invasion Prioritic and uh, pelvic lymph node, prioritic most important diagnostic, okay, prognostic, okay, and then the hematogenous uh, invasion to liver bone uh, lung, okay. After that, I talked about the lab tests to be done, like creatinine, uremia, and anemia tests, okay, and how to prevent uh, pre uh, uh, cervical cancer, pap smear, the most important, okay, and preventive risk factor vaccination. So, this is all about survive invasive cervical cancer thank you very much for watching see you in the next video